not mix. Oh, I need a new do on a day like today. Or maybe that's no do. Oh, a shaved head will probably be much better. Oh, let's see what I can do. That's better. Oh, I came up here for some peace and quiet. But that seems to be mission impossible. Maybe I need a new mission. Yes, your mission, should you accept it, is to find the answer to this question. How is wind made? <laughs> Not that kind of wind. I mean the puffy, blustery, blow my hair across my face type. How is wind made? Wind is made by trees. Wind comes up over the ocean. By trees. Some trees make it because they, they swish it around. I think wind is made from the clouds. The wind is made by trees moving. Being pushed by some clouds and um, people can't see it. The trees are like moving side to side to make the wind. Like the sun and rain get together and they make spe steam but then it gets actually cold and so they make the wind. From the air blowing it? By trees. So you think the trees have something to do with how wind is made? Well, you could be right. Or you could be full of hot air. Oh, there's a thought. You know how human wind is made? Well, one way is with lots of bacteria inside your digestive system releasing gases. You hold on to them until you're ready to release those gases yourself. So maybe there's a huge pile of bacteria somewhere in the world making wind. Oh, I hope not. Wind. It's the name given to the movement of particles of air or gases. And just like air, wind is for feeling, not for seeing. Now the different speeds of wind have been given different names. Well, let's see. There's Cyril and Myrtle. Oh, and there's Bob and Freddy and... Okay, just kidding. But Sir Francis Beaufort once designed a wind scale, and it looks a bit like this. You say the wind is calm when the wind is not blowing at all, so that smoke can rise straight up from the chimney. Moderate breeze is the name for a wind that's between 20 to 29 kilometers per hour. It can blow rubbish down the street and make small branches sway. A gale at 62 to 74 kilometers per hour will break twigs off branches. Whereas a hurricane blows over 117 kilometers per hour and can destroy just about everything in its path. If the wind scale were actually a menu, I think I'd only ever order up to a strong breeze, oh, with fries, of course. When it comes to the wind on Earth, in fact, anything to do with the weather, you can nearly always point the finger at the sun. Exactly. And that's because this glowing ball of nuclear energy heats the surface of the Earth. It makes the air and water particles in the atmosphere expand and move about. And that movement creates wind. As the Earth rotates, that warm air moves away from the sun and is cooled, giving us our cool nighttime temperatures. Then as the Earth keeps rotating back towards the sun, that patch of atmosphere is heated again. Well, an interesting thing to note, it's always much warmer near the equator. That's because that's the part of the planet that's closest to the sun. And the North and South Poles are much, much colder. They're further away from the sun. The expanding and shrinking of air is impossible to see. Or should I say almost impossible? Because you're about to witness this miraculous event here on Susie's World. I take a balloon and I measure the circumference of it at its widest point. What have we got there? 82 centimetres. Write that down. Then I pop it in a chilli bin full of ice. 
like so. It's now a few hours later. Well, let's see what happened to that balloon. When the balloon went into the chilli bin, it measured 82 centimetres around its circumference. It now measures... 75 and a half centimetres. It's shrunk. And that's because warm air takes up more space than cold air. When I blew warm air into this balloon, it made the balloon expand. But because it was put into the cold chilli bin, that air contracted. So it's not filling the balloon as much as it was. This is a patch of cold air. This is the sun. This is earth. And as the sun's rays beat down on the earth and warm the earth's surface, the atmosphere is warmed in between. That patch of cold air particles is warmed. They expand. They rise up, up, up into the atmosphere where it gets cold and they cool down. So they drop back down to the Earth's surface. More cold air particles have already rushed in to fill that gap. They are warmed, they expand and rise until they cool down too, way up in the atmosphere and drop. And so the cycle continues. And the faster a mass of air is heated and rises, the faster cold air rushes in to fill the gap and the stronger the winds are. Wind is made by air particles that are constantly on the move, warming and rising, cooling and dropping. Warm air rises up from hot, dry places, especially around the equator, and cold air from places like the poles moves in to fill those spaces. So the air is constantly circulating around the world, and that is how wind is made. Now, years ago, intrepid explorers and traders used the winds that formed over the seas to sail from port to port. They called them trade winds. And if those winds formed on a still earth instead of an earth that rotates, they would look a bit like this. But because the earth constantly rotates, the wind flow looks like this. Because the air above wide expanses of water is much cooler than it is over land, you get a lot of cool onshore breezes. And I think the whole of Aotearoa can feel that wind, te ho, that comes up from Antarctica, because boy, that is cold. That wind is known as a southerly. Westerlies come from the west, easterlies come from the east, and northerlies come from, you guessed it, the north. Hey, why don't you try making your own Beaufort scale? See if you can come up with different examples for the wind speeds. Maybe you have some questions you'd like answered on Susie's World. You can write to us at Susie's World, PO Box 34307 Birkenhead, Auckland, or email me. My address is susie at treehut.com. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Kakite Because the air is much cooler over wide expanses of water than it is over the land, we get a lot of off onshore, offshore, onshore breezes. Well, one way is because of all the bacteria in your digestive system. As the sun... No, sorry. Nothing. Having a day off. Oh. Now that's better. Yes, I can cope with that. Oh. Anyone got a clue of what I'm saying next? Thanks to New Zealand On Air, we couldn't have done it without you.